Hey guys, in this video, we'll be setting up source control for our project. Now, source control is a staple in any modern development team, and our tool of choice will be GitHub. Why? Well, it's free for one, and it is remote. So that means if your, your machine crashes, your code is on GitHub, you have nothing to worry about because it's not local to you. Now, the relevance of that is that source control helps you to track your development progress. So it's a good practice that when you're putting in a new module, putting in a new feature, you've completed a task successfully, you do what you call check in your code to some repository that's remote. And that means that you're able to track that, okay, on this date, I did this and, and yeah, everything adds up to the final project. It's especially useful in a team setting where everybody's you know, contributing different parts. And so using source control helps everybody to know exactly what everybody else is doing. So GitHub, once again, is a free tool that allows us to accomplish this kind of collaboration. You can go ahead and create a, a, a user account quite simply, just give them a username, an email, and a password. And the process is pretty simple, but I'm already registered. So I'm just going to log in real quickly. Once you're logged in, if you're a new user, then you may not have as much activity as I do, but I have a few repositories and I'm following a few people. And so it kind of gives you that kind of social coding community kind of feeling. And, you know, once you set up a new project, well, to set up a new project, you just need to click this new icon over here. You give it a name. So in our case, then we would call it maybe SMS or school management. So I'm going to call it SMS give it a description, you know, small school management system and yada, yada, yada. I'll save that for later. And then we can just go ahead and click create repository. Once that's done, they kind of give us some instructions as to how we can go about interacting with our repository. Now on this page, you'll be given some instructions as to how you can go about synchronizing your local code and your work with the remote repository that GitHub is affording you. So they give us some commands that we can run, but before we can even run these commands, we need some application called Git. So if we just go and Google the word Git, not GitHub, just G-I-T, then we will see that there is a tool out there that we can download and install and you can just go ahead and do that. It's pretty easy to install. You just download it. You do next, 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 next. Once it's completed, then if you, you might need to do a restart of your computer or at least a command prompt if you had it open before. But if you do it and then you go into command prompt and just type the word git and you see something looking like this, then you know it was installed successfully. So you can go ahead and do that if you need to. If you don't have Git already, you can go ahead, install it, and then resume this video. But I'm going to press on, and I'm going to follow these instructions as to how I can synchronize their remote repository with my code folder found here in HDDocs called SMS. So they instruct me that I need to run these commands, but firstly, you need to be in the directory to run these commands. So when I say in the directory, I mean going into my command prompt and then I'm going to do CD, C and it's ZAMP, HD docs and SMS. Well, oh, sorry, I have a folder called SM. So it went to SM instead of SMS. So CD, SMS. And then once I'm there, I can say dear, just to make sure I'm at the right place and I'm seeing all the files that I need to see. All right. So then they say, and I'm just going to point out the most important parts. So this is them telling you that you can create a file inside some directory and that's how you get the file up. But I'm not going to do all of that. I'm just going to start at the git init. So git init is going to run a command or is a command that will initialize your current directory as a git repository. So now git knows about the directory. Next, I'm going to do a commit or well, actually I'm going to do a git add. So the git add would have said add this file because in this example, it says echo 
this text into some file called readme.md and then add readme.md. So one, we don't have a readme nd, and two, we have more files than just one. So I'm going to do a git add, but I'm going to say full stop. So git add full stop now says, give me everything that is inside of the directory. And I'm getting an error here. All right, so that's what happens when you run experiments. I just did some cleaning up in my directory and I'm going to do git add once again. And well, that is the result. So I'm sure you didn't get this error. If you got something like what I just got on the second time, then you should be fine. Next, we're encouraged to do a git commit and a dash M and some comments. So for context, what happens is that each time we quote unquote check in our code or submit some code to the repository, we are encouraged to give a comment so that somebody else looking on will know exactly what was done. So they, they encourage us to say first commit to say, you know, the first time I'm pushing code, that's fine. But then we always want to be more descriptive so we can say created project and folder structure so that somebody who comes along knows exactly what the first thing was what was that was done so i'm going to do a git commit with that comment and then you see it says it creates some nodes and sets up the folder structure so now it knows that okay all of what was in the folder that we just added is a part of this commit all right and then Having done all of that, we this is this one is going to be a one-time progress so process. So some of them will repeat, but this is a one-time process where we need to add remote origin. So I'm just going to actually just copy this. I'm not going to type this out, and I'm going to paste it in the command prompt. And before I run it, though, I'm going to explain exactly what is being said. So, all right, so. Uh, having pasted, let me just explain it before I run it. So every command starts with the word git. A remote is like a connection string. So we're saying I want to create or add a connection called remote. So it says remote add origin. So it's like saying connection add one called origin. And then the origin will represent the link to our repository. So if you look back at the repository, you notice that in this section, you actually have that same block of text ending with dot git, right? So that's just the, how you connect to the repo that you created. So whatever you give, whatever name you gave it, you're going to see that name dot git, right? And then, so what we're doing is creating a connection to this repository found at that link and we're calling it origin. All right, so I'm going to run that command, press enter. All right, and no error so far, so far so good. And then the final command, which is git push, and then a dash u, and then origin master. All right, so I'm going to once again copy this and then explain it before I run it. So we're saying I want to push my code. So I did say check in, so I keep on saying checking in the code. Push is another word that is used when talking about getting the code from your computer to the repository, right? So git push and dash u, which is one of those directives that you always need to include. And then origin. So remember, origin is our is the name of the connection to the repo. So we're saying we're pushing to this, whatever this is connected to, and what we call the master branch. Now, the thing about source control is that they allow you to branch your code, meaning you have a master branch, which usually represents the final code that is fit for release. However, when you're building on modules or experimenting, you don't necessarily want to mess with the stable code. So what you can do is create a branch. So if I'm adding a new module, maybe for groceries, then I call it a groceries branch where I take a copy of the stable stable code, put it in another container, and then I can run all my experiments over there, check in the code, check all my changes without actually affecting the master branch with the stable code, all right? So in this situation, we have no other branches, so we're pushing to the master branch, which is the stable code, or it's about to be our stable code. And when I press enter, 
then we will see some amount of magic happen. All right. Okay. So it asks me to log in. So I'm going to quickly log in because on my computer, it knows nothing about me and GitHub. I'm just the one creating it. So just to note that this, these steps are not necessarily unique to GitHub. Any Git provider will require you to do similar steps. All right. So based on the provider, then you would be prompted differently. So, okay. It's saying that my logon failed. So I'm going to have to do it again. I'm sorry about that. Let me just do it quickly. All right. All right. So now we're seeing some action. All right. And I'm not seeing anything alluding to an error. So when I go back to my GitHub page and I refresh, then I see my folders and all the files that I created. And you see the comment created project and folder structure. All right. Latest commit five minutes ago. Wow. Huh. So we'll tell you all the details about each commit. You can always look at the history. So I only have one commit. So when I click on commits, I'm only seeing the one that I did just now. You see that you have one branch. You can actually create other branches if you need to. And in a team setting, that would be useful because you don't want to mess up the main branch with the main code that everybody's using. You want to have your own branch so you can do your thing when you're satisfied or everybody's satisfied that your thing is working as it should. Then you can do what you call a merge. All right. And you can also. Well, I am talking about a team setting. So you would notice that it says one contributor and that means it's me. But if you're working in a team setting, you probably want to add more contributors to your project, All right? So that's a page when I, that's loaded when I clicked contributors. So it's just a graph to show who is checking in and who is doing what. But to add a contributor, you'd want to go to settings and then you would see collaborator. So when you add a collaborator to your project, it means now that they are able to clone the project and actively check in and be a part owner. So in a team setting, you want to have collaborators on your project so that, you know, they can work with you better. As you go along, you probably want to log issues and the more persons on the team, you can create a new issue and then assign it to somebody so that it's like a task list list. So you could say like, okay, button doesn't work. You fix that. Um, navigation bar is not clean, you fix that, etc., etc., And that's a nice way to log all the issues and the work being done on a project. Pull requests refer to when people branch the code and then they think they're finished, they can do a pull request where they alert you that they would like to merge their code into the master branch at that point. And then you can probably do your own code review just to make sure everything is okay before you access you approve sorry that code that pull request which will activate an automatic merge of the code bases all right a wiki is an excellent way to keep your documentation up you know all the features you're adding and all the troubleshooting you can do that uh, the project well it gives you a little project management interface so github is really 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 awesome when it comes to helping you to manage a project end to end. Now, GitHub actually gives you a desktop um, interface, like a user interface to actually help you to interact with their platform without doing much coding. All right. So if you actually just go over to open another tab and you just say GitHub desktop, then you will find that they have a website for it desktop.github.com and then you can actually download that tool which will help you to get to track everything using a graphical user interface so i actually have that tool i actually prefer to initiate or initialize my projects using the command line but then going forward i can use a tool to check in regularly and just get it done quickly so i have another project here open so i'm just going to go and go to file and then I can say add local repository and then find that repository. So I go and browse to the SMS. I select the folder, add repository, and then it will kind of 
initial initialize and recontextualize itself to that repository so any change i make thereafter so let's say for instance i'm going to add a all right i'm just going to change some text here so i'm going to say in this page instead of saying hello world i'm going to say hello lecturers so that's my first change since submitting my code to this remote repository all right and then having done that you see that even visual studio code is kind of tracking the changes and this this is like the universal git symbol so source control is kind of baked into visual studio code where it's showing me that yeah okay i see that you have source control on this project and i see that you made a change if i go to github for desktop i'll see that it's actually showing me that th that was the old code this is the new code that's the file that was modified and then they kind of give me a default comment but maybe i want to be a bit more explicit than this so i said changed lecturers page message and then having done that i can commit to master so what happens is a two-part step i initialize git on my computer which means i have my own tracking on my computer but then i still need to push it to origin and remember what origin was origin is the connection to the github so that's what we'll call it so when i say push origin then the desktop application just takes care of that in it, uh, that synchronization for me and then if i go back to github in go, go back to my repository and refresh then i will see that the change was made 36 seconds ago and you see that there's a different commit message here and now the commit count is at two so far as many times as you're going to commit you will see these changes once again github is an awesome tool to use to manage your source code and your project and as we go along, we will be exploring more and more what GitHub can do for us. But as we build out this project, we'll be sure to check in our changes as we go along.